I'm all for default dimensions, tolerances, and rules, provided they have one clear meaning. In the Y14-5 standard, there are many defaults, such as on a 2D orthographic drawing, a 90-degree angle applies where center lines and lines depicting features are shown at right angles and no angle is specified. Or uh, all tolerances apply to the full depth, length, and width of the feature. A large default profile of a surface tolerance that's related to datum reference frames is a wonderful idea today on drawings. However, many companies use default tolerances that are not clear. One company that I worked with used what they called STAMP. It stood for Standard Tolerancing and Manufacturing Practices. It relied on implied datum features and meaningless rules to determine tolerances. I helped lead an effort to stamp out STAMP. They're now using the Y14-5 standard very effectively. This tip is about default tolerances that do not have one clear meaning. Referencing the Y14-5 standard invokes a whole lot of tolerances that keep our drawings quite simple. In a previous tip, I showed how this drawing and these geometric tolerances default or invoke all of these tolerances that you're seeing in blue. And they all have one clear meaning. In fact, you invoke all of these notes also, so I don't have to put them on the drawing. Now which would you rather have, the drawing on the right or the drawing on the left? I think we'd all go with the drawing on the right. The reason we've gone to geometric tolerances is to fix the problem that we used to have with those general tolerances. You're all familiar with these linear and angular tolerances that do not relate to the datum reference frame. They allow for tolerance accumulation. We get wedge-shaped tolerance zones because of that angular tolerance and we end up dimensioning and tolerancing points in space that cannot reproducibly be measured. So because of these and other problems with this general tolerance, we are now seeing companies replacing these with things like the general profile of a surface tolerance to a datum reference frame that has one clear meaning. I still find some companies though trying to take some intermediate step. I see companies now referencing ISO 2768. There's a few problems with this. First of all, this standard applies to uh, machined metal parts and may apply also to sheet metal parts. We're told this in the standard right up front. But I find people applying this standard to things like molded plastic parts. In the standard, it says that exceeding the general tolerance should lead to a rejection of the workpiece only if the function is impaired. Who makes that decision? That's, that's uh, pretty subjective. And it's not clear when you look at the tolerances provided in this standard what quality level they're at. Are they at a three sigma level or a six sigma level? In the standard, they show this sample drawing, a fairly simple drawing, and we're told that if you use the tables, the tolerances that are down here in phantom are implied. So all the stuff in phantom here is implied. On a complex drawing, I don't know how you'd be able to figure out what is implied on these features. And things like, you see datum C here, datum feature C, is that hole? Why couldn't it have been this pair of flats? How did I know to imply that hole as a datum feature? And I could. I could go on and on with those sorts of questions. This standard is, is an older standard and it's, it's going to be revised, but I strongly recommend that you just state using Y14-5 what your requirements of your part are. Usually less than half of the features on a part require tight tolerances. Defaulting to tight general tolerances on the entire part can only increase cost. If you need help replacing your default tolerances with clear, concise defaults, give Techies a call because at Techies, you know, GD&D rules. I'll see you next tip.